Hello everybody, welcome back to this campaign, The Journey of the Centennial. Um, today we are going to be playing a part of the campaign that I named the Sewer Scuttle. Um, I figured if you guys wanted to, we could do, like, each person could do a little recap of their own, like how they remember the course of events. Um, either that or I can just tell you all what happened. Um, but. I thought that way we could get some more perspectives. Um, so if you guys don't mind, is, is, does that sound good? Everybody just tells it from their own perspective? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Um, let's just start with Caleb, because he's the first on my screen. Yeah, um, so basically the way that Caleb remembers everything is uh, we went through a, uh, <clears throat> a small scuffle at the beginning uh trying to open up a uh, sewer as the world churned around us and uh things went pretty crazy uh me being the uh type of character i am i decided uh, it wasn't worth the effort uh the rewards wouldn't be there so i suggested we all pass it and head out back to get to uh the business in town that i was heading to um, on the way to that, we ran into a pack of gnolls, and uh, battle ensued. Um, we quickly killed these guys and built camp. Um, while everyone was sleeping, I snuck around and, uh, you know, had some fun with uh, the loot that was around there. And we met Ace, who suddenly appeared out of nowhere. And then... Uh, we headed off to the ferry and continued to uh, head across that, and we had a larger pack of gnolls chase us on the water with boats, and uh, safely after a skirmish on the on the water, we did get away and ended up a little waterlogged on the uh, shore where we built camp and end up here now. Excellent. Also, uh, Bali, I think that the stream is under Minecraft instead is, of D&D, yeah. &D. Um, which I did last time, so um, in case you want to change the yeah, I'll go title over. Fix that up. All right. Um, I think Raz, you are next. Yep. So, okay, uh, Phil remembers the world spinning and not going into the sewer portal for different reasons, mainly because I don't particularly want to go to hell. Uh, so what Tell does remember is as we were traveling through those lands, we came upon a um, massacre that took place in a tabaxi camp. And only one uh, sole uh, child survived in, in wrapping somewhere. Tell picked them up and decided to take them with him as you know the, the child seemed defenseless uh, we went to the null settlement where we defeated the gnolls that were there and set up camp where we were joined by a mysterious stranger in the morning the following day uh when we did go onto the ferry um which you know calling it a boat is rich um it was a raft uh, we were attacked by other gnolls uh, during this scuffle tell actually went down but was revived by the child, Nook, who turned out to have not only the power to heal him, but also the power to teleport everyone away once the, uh, once the, um, once the scuffle was over. He teleported them to the beach, where they were safe for, to, to rest for the night. Excellent. Ghost? So, uh, Tempt's memory. <laughs> Very hazy. Um, he wasn't exactly there uh, at the time, but he does remember uh, bumping into a pack of unfriendly gnolls, which they uh, quickly dealt with. Um, he then went to rest for the night, had some funky dreams, um, woke up, had a nice rabbit, uh, went down to find this mysterious boat, uh, Roth's person. Uh, decided that he really doesn't like water. Um, very, very doesn't like water, actually. And um, 
decided he would not be uh, taking the raft and would instead be flying. Uh, they, he was then he then noticed that they were being chased by a bunch of gnolls, um, which is not something that he they are known to do, and uh, Tempest thought he'd have a little fun with that, and uh, very nearly died. <laughs> So uh, he sort of less than gracefully withdrew from that and realized that while he was having his fun with the gnolls, uh, the boat had been broken somehow and thus decided to rescue the cat specifically and probably leave everyone else to drown. And thus we are where we are. So, Rose? Ace remembers waking up in a camp of strangers after some uh, spiritual processing. Uh, these strangers told him that uh, they wanted to go beat up a fairy, so he was like, all right, whatever, we'll just go along. Uh, on the way, he noticed some dead bodies and stuff. There was some loot. Just kept going. Uh, at the fishing village that they went to because there was apparently a different ferry that they needed to catch. Uh, met some dead people, some not dead people, got on some sort of raft, got chased by hellish dog people that were mad at these other people for whatever reason. Uh, so he fucking fled. And that didn't go so great. And now he's on the shore. Fantastic job. I think it's really fun to hear from everybody's perspective because each character is sort of going to remember different aspects of the journey. Uh, like Caleb remembers the loot, Raz remembers um, finding Nook, Ghost remembers almost dying to the gnolls, and Ace remembers, uh, or Rose, sorry, it's going to take me a long time to get used to this. Uh, Rose is go it remembers um, the indifference that ace felt throughout the whole thing um okay fantastic job thank you guys so to start out you guys ha are on the shore of lake tepid you have washed up um i think that we did a level up last time so you should all be level four now um if you're not then quick throw some extra hit points in there um and we can continue uh, the shore of Lake Tepid runs along the side of the road, which is why we have this lovely image of a road here. Um, and you are free to do whatever you wish to do. I believe it is mid-morning where we left us last time. Okay, can I can I roll a perception check to see what's uh, what's in the immediate area? Of course. Uh, 13. All right, so you see the road off to your left. Um, on its side is a forest, um, the, the same forest that you guys encounter the gnolls in, just many, many miles further. Um, you can see the mountains off to the right, and you see that the terrain over to your right, past the lake, is quite rocky, um, definitely foothills-esque. Um, the road itself does not look um, currently occupied. You don't see anyone else traveling on it, which perhaps you could think of as strange considering the large event that is about to take place in Urtenmoor, which is only a little bit further down this road. Um, and I'll say that all of you know that, that you're almost at the end of your journey. So, um, yeah, besides that, just your regular birds, bees, I don't know, twigs, trees, so. Okay. I mean, no. I'd hate to be that guy, but I'd like to press on with the journey. Uh, if I recall correctly, Tempest is still holding on to little baby Nook, and he is going to hand Nook back over to Tell and sort of Thank pat you. down the spiky fur a little. Thank you. I'm sure he appreciates it.
Do you guys want to have any um, after battle discussion of what it's just happened, or do you want to just press press on? I mean, is it strange that a Tabaxi child that we have picked up on the on the side of a road somewhere teleported us at quite a range? Is that worth thinking about potentially? I, I don't think so. All right, well, very well. But you know me, Tell. I do know you. <laughs> I agree. Oh, strangest I... thing I've seen this week. I agree. Well, we then... do need to press on. I do have business in the t in the city. Let's go. Very well. All right, and with that, you press on. It is a nice morning after the storm that you just suffered through on the lake. And the road is quiet, peaceful, birds are chirping, the flowers on the side of the road are starting to bloom as we're coming upon midsummer. Or perhaps they're in full bloom. That would make more sense. The flowers on the side of the road are in full bloom because we're coming upon midsummer. And um, everything is as it should be. You continue on for about 30 minutes um, and you make it sort of out of the eye shot of the lake when you start to see and smell the signs of a fire. What do you do? Can we tell which direction it's coming from or do you want a perception for that? I think that a perception would be great. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. 22. Oh, 13. Okay. <laughs> I'm not very visual uh, today. I need to get a new die. 10. So, tell you um, using your paladin divine senses or something. I don't know. You look upon the skies. You see the draft of smoke that are sort of pluming from the um, forest side of the road. Mm. And you can tell that they become densest a little bit further on and up a small path. The smoke is coming from over there. I think we had better check it out. I don't know. Do you all choose to press on? Fire, fire normally means danger. Yes, for other people who might be innocent. Yeah. People could be dying. People aren't profit. Yeah, why not? Let's, uh, let's do this. All right. So, you walk forward a bit um, until... It's, it's, it's an emergency situation. I think we better run. Okay, you... <laughs> well, Tal runs, the rest At of you shamble. A jog. <laughs> I just stay back a bit. I'm 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 gonna stay about thirty to forty feet behind everyone. I'm not really overly concerned. I'll just slowly walk, just not really caring, because the, when the fire's done, I'll be able to get my loot. Okay. All right. Hold on. Just have to change. Oops. So sorry. Uh, just have to change my yeah. No problem. Screen share. Yeah. Uh, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, so um, you've just left the main road and are on this small path through the woods. Um, in front of you, you see the remains of a broken down cart. Um, and the smoke is starting to get a bit heavier, but doesn't seem to be um, em uh, coming from any sort of large fire, more like the wispy remains of some embers. Um, and we're going to, as you continue down the path, I figure I'll just do a little walking down the path, you come across this, if I can, Get it to the, there we go. 
um, you come across the remains of a ruined fort. In on the outside of the fort, you see um, a tattered and torn tent and a few bodies scattered around. Um, there is a fire that seems to have spread from a cooking pot um, or like a little campfire where a cooking pot was set and the um, surrounding bushes were lit up, though those have now died down into the sort of crusty golden embers that you see in front of you. Um, it looks as though there has been some sort of skirmish here. Um, the tent that you see is torn to shreds, um, both from the inside and the outside, as it looks. Um, there are weapons scattered about, um, and, of course, the bodies would indicate a scuffle. Do we recognize, what would you like to do? Do we recognize the body race or no? You do. Um, I would say it's it's a human. They're, they're all humans that you see, so they are pretty standard, populate most of the lands, so all of you would recognize them. What are the chances this is an accident? I want to look for an ambush. Oh, okay. Um, I will just run up to the fort and shout, Hello there! Is anyone alive? Can you hear me? Well, that's one way to look for an ambush. Okay. Um, as, as, uh... Sorry, what? I'm just a good guy that I'll, I'll, I'll shout that. Yeah, Caleb is going to ready himself because he knows how stupid Tell can be. <laughs> Excellent. So I pull out my um, two my two daggers and just grip onto them real tight, just uh, in a ready position, just in case, because yelling in this type of situation normally attracts trouble. Um, <laughs> uh, does anyone else like to do anything? No, just just hanging out. That's cool. Yeah, as, as soon as he starts I'm, running forward, I'm going to hold back as if well. If I can. Okay. So, Raz, you are at the entrance of this fort, and I can do a little... Wait. You're like, right I have no here. idea whether or not... Okay, yes, we are good. Why is my... I'm... My mouse. Okay. What's my... Should be. All right. Doesn't matter. Um, so you are right here. You guys can see my cursor, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amazing. Um, and you hear from beyond this wall over here um, some scuffling and some angry, chittering voices that are sort of high pitched and irritating to the ear, like kind of sounding. Um, it sounds like there aren't that many of them and they seem to be startled by your proud, bold proclamation of your presence. What do you wish to do? Um, Caleb's going to try to find some uh, shady cover and slip into uh, um, stealth mode. Yeah, okay. so will Ace. <laughs> Okay. I, I will continue to shout. It's all right. I'm not here to harm anyone. I'm here to help. And as are my... I am not here to harm anyone. I rolled a dirty 20. To hide. You are nice and hidden. I rolled a 6. You stepped behind a bush that is shorter <laughs> so... than you. I mean, so your knees are hidden. <laughs> I'm also like mossy, so you know maybe it's similar. You know what? I'll give you I'll give you um, credit for that. You, if you hold very still, look just like the bush that you stepped behind. Do you want to roll for just, advantage? Uh, uh, yeah. If, do you? Yeah, do you, uh, so that would just mean that you roll twice and take the higher roll. Yeah. All right. I'll do that. My higher roll is six. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. You need to change your die. <laughs> yeah. 
So meanwhile, we have Caliph over here, who literally like just like melts into the essence of shadow, and then Ace is like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that too." Scuffles behind a bush. Yeah, plus, that sounds about right. Plus, plus nine, is, hitting a dirty twenty means I only rolled eleven. So, <laughs> that's that's impressive. Um, uh, sorry, Tempest, did you want to do anything? Um, well, I before we we got to this point, I nat twenty my investigation check okay. on the campsite, but I wasn't sure how well I could be heard on my laptop, so I swapped to my desk to my phone. So sorry, for, I didn't hear you. Um, but I can give you some investigation I'm, stuff. Ex all right, dice. I see how it is. So, Are you also sneaking off to hide behind a bush? Yeah. yeah once yeah, I've done my investigation check, that's a twenty-two to stealth. <laughs> okay. Um. So your investigation check, from what you can see at your um, vantage point near the carriage, um the broken carriage in the background. Uh, you see that the camp has just been decimated. It doesn't seem like any loot has been stolen, um, but whatever happened here was beyond bloody. Like, you think of the concept of overkill, that is what happened here. Um, the people are just torn to shreds. Um, pieces of them are missing and uh, it seems like those missing pieces can be seen like 50 meters away. So it's, it's just, it's brutal. Um, I know that my little map here makes it look almost idyllic. It's like everybody's sleeping, but just imagine a really brutal, bloody scene. Um, they don't really have like great blood spatter in the, uh, app that I used to make maps. So, um, and then you, sorry, what did you roll to hide? A 22. Okay, so, like Caleb, you just melt away into the breeze, and Ace is like, oh man, gotta, gotta work harder on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell, you are now alone, as far as you can yeah. tell. So and before, and before I was, I wanted to say like uh, me and my friends here are are here not to harm. And then I turn around and I just don't see anyone. I just go, well, I mean no harm. <laughs> uh, Nook lets out a little mew from your satchel or wherever you have placed him. Um, but it does not seem like a scared one. Just like a, I'm waking okay. up for the day. And you hear more of this scurrying and loud, angry <laughs> as a few creatures seem to be conversing. Um, as this is happening, you see one poke his head around the corner and then give you a little glare and go, Go away! We don't want you here! Your house is on fire. My house? This isn't my house. Now get out of here! And the Are creature you... that you see, um, let me just do a quick share. Boop, boop. I think I can do this. So sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Trying to incorporate in your suggestion. Let's try this. Ugh, my computer's running like a potato. <laughs> okay. Now, um, are, they, are these creatures like speaking in common? Uh, they are not speaking in common when they are conversing with themselves. They are speaking in common when they're talking to Raz. Okay, what language um, are they speaking? Is it under common well, or are they speaking... A different language they are speaking a different language okay. um but you can roll me an investigation history or perception check i guess mm, no, let's make it a history when, perception yeah. wouldn't pick that well, up if it's history i'd like to get in on this as well they're speaking yeah 
Yeah, I'll, I'll um, have... It's I'd... His... You guys are doing a history check? Yeah, I got a 10. Okay. I'm gonna have to roll a nat 20 for anything. Yeah, I got, like, six. <laughs> I just hear chittering. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you guys just hear chittering, but from around the corner, you see... This guy poke his head. Well, I rolled a nat 20, but I decided that's silly, so I rolled a 3 instead. <laughs> <laughs> self imposed disadvantage on account of suspicious dice. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're just never happy, are you? Everyone just wants to be at my level. <laughs> <laughs> Leading by example, Ace. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so you see this guy poke his head. He's like, I'm not interested. Bring your little pamphlets or whatever somewhere else, Paladin. And then he runs back behind the wall. Um, I have no pamphlets. The house, this, this building is on fire. And you said it's not your house? <laughs> he pokes his head around and he's like, No, this stump. No one's left here in ages. As this conversation's going on, can Caleb slip around the uh, east side up those stairs that were there and try to see sure. what I can see there? Yes, and sorry, I'm going to switch back to the map. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. yeah. Now, do you want me to do another stealth and an, uh, perception, or...? No, we'll just say that your uh, your dirty twenty volt is over. Uh, it is at this point that Tempest is going to get up and just walk away, just start heading back to the main path. So I got a fifteen on my perception check. All right, so you're going up the little uh, the little ladder that there little by ladder the tent. There. Yep. Okay. So um, as Tempest departs. Caleb is going to see um, into the fort a little bit more. And you see what looks to be the continuation of this camp. Um, so there's like a burned out fire pits. Um, there are a lot of broken bits of furniture that look old and moldy. Um, and you see, again, more loot, um, as in possessions of the deceased scattered about and by this corner right here if you guys can see my cursor by the fire pit um there are three goblins who are hurriedly stuffing things into little sacks and glancing behind them um one of them keeps peeking around the corner and yelling go away to raz who has startled them um the goblins look unharmed um, they look in peak condition um, and are just quickly pulling things off of bodies. Okay, how f how far apart is that's ten feet, right? The gap between the two walls. Yeah, ten feet. Okay, I'm gonna stupidly do an athletics check, but I do get a bonus on that. So I get to roll with Oh, and we'll say um, along the edges of all of these walls are some sort of like rampart. So you can you can move along them, though it's going to be a little bit difficult because this, these walls are pretty dilapidated. So um, I'm going to make you roll like athletics checks to hop over bits of rubble. Yeah, that's not a problem. But I also do have... Uh... Where is it? Second story works, so climbing no longer costs any extra movement, and I can make running jumps. Um, nice. And I get a five five foot bonus to that. Okay, I gotta shut this down. Sorry, guys, I've got some. <sighs> Jesus. Okay, shut up. Uh, when you're. Sorry, that just, my phone just tied into my computer there. Okay, so I'm going to do, so you want an athletics check and uh, my jump. So for my athletics, I got a 13. 
13. 13? Yep. Yeah, um, you can definitely make it over this wall, along this wall, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Yeah, and for my jump, will that be an athletics or an acrobatics you want? Let's make it an acrobatics. Okay, that will be a 23. All right, so you can even do a little flip if you want. So while stealthed, Caleb goes running, jumping over all these little bits, and he does a little tiny front flip over the 10-foot gap, lands on the other side, um, grasps himself, and pulls out his crossbow because he loves creating right. chaos and takes aim at the one who keeps peeking and shoots him. Okay. Um, roll me a an attack roll. That will be, I believe, a dirty 20. Uh, no, that is 23. That and is? How far away is he from me, actually? I'm right at the edge of the wall there, and he's peeking around. Is he within 10 feet of me? Oh, yeah. He's just right below you. Okay. Um, so I will do my sneak attack at the same time. Get my 2d6 on top of that. And my 1d8. Uh, 17 damage. Okay. <laughs> uh, give me a death blow, please. So as Caleb does his uh, flip over the thing, he lands, and as he's landing, pulls out his crossbow, throws a bolt in, and shoots him as he's going real quick. And the bolt soars through and pierces right through the top of the skull of the, the goblin. As he's starting to turn around and go back, and it blasts out the back, and he just sort of lulls and slumps down to the ground. Making an noise as he does. With this, um, the two go goblins who are standing back away from the wall are going to go, No, Drongo! No! Why'd you do that? Oh, we got to get out of here, man! I, I'm over here. The bolts, the bolts apparently came from the other side. I didn't do anything. Um, oh, so, hi, Caleb. Caleb, are you still hidden, or are you just gonna be out in the open? Uh, I. You tell me if I. I'm up on the wall. I so feel like if there's it's nowhere pretty for easy me to, to hide. see you. Okay. Yeah, you're not like army ranger crawling, so. Um, yeah, so everybody can see you. And the two goblins below, you look up at you and they're like, Please, master, have mercy. Please let us go. I'm going to move in closer because they don't seem harmful. Yeah, so as they're talking to me like this, I look at them and I just say, Leave all the loot for me and I'll think about it. Ah, you, you, mm. Can we take a little bit? We just need to shout something to our boss. I pull out five gold coins and I throw them at them. You can keep this, but nothing else. <sighs> Stupid overlanders. <laughs> and they start bickering with each other um, while picking up the gold coins. They do notice that I'm um, brow, right? Setting down their sacks as they do so. They do notice I'm drow, right? Um, yes. So they wouldn't say Overlander to me. They're not very smart. <laughs> okay. Now, your friend um, said that this place is abandoned. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, and also, why is it on fire? Look. I don't know any more than you do, weirdo. I just stumbled upon this little little encampment here, post-bloodshed, here with my friends. We were just going to the tavern to get a drink, okay? And we thought that maybe, you know, we could get a promotion in the ranks if we got a little bit of gold to, to grease the wheels, if you know what I mean. But we didn't do this. We're just, uh, what do you call it? Well, we're just taking advantage, that's all. 
And what you're saying is you weren't the one who started the fire. No, the fire was burning pretty bright when we showed up. That's how we found this place. They should start singing, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We didn't stop the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well... Can I... Are they actually speaking the truth? Can I insight check that? Sure. Well, that's a 13. I was gonna say that's because... That's good enough. I was gonna say because he's so suspicious, does he get an advantage on that? No, no. I mean, <laughs> honestly, you guys can tell with these three goblins here... Um, while they do look like they could maybe beat up a lonely adventurer um, and steal his pocket money, they're not very imposing. The devastation that you see in this camp has been wreaked by something much more vicious, um, something much more lethal. Um, I just turn away from the door and I just go, leave. Yeah, okay. Fine. But but just know that whoever did this is gonna come and get you too. And mark my word. And then they scuttle away and um disappear into the ground. Hmm. I don't know why, but for some reason that didn't feel as threatening as it was probably meant to be. Probably because well, they also don't know what caused this. Um, I think that that might be an accurate assumption. Mm. Very well. All right, well, so you guys are now in this abandoned, um, bloodied camp that is set up in this sort of dilapidated outlook post. Um, what do you do? Did they grab the five gold and run away, or did they take anything else? They grabbed the five gold and ran okay. away. I've already taken that off my sheet. Um, I'm going to jump okay. down off the wall and quickly take a look around to see if there's anything worth uh, pocketing before the uh, holy tell uh, gets into the camp area where I am. All right. So let me uh, just move my... Ignore whatever you're doing. <laughs> so you are now sort of in the thick of it. Oh, and while all of this is happening, Tempest is going to be attempting to decipher the books, just sort of sitting on the side of the road. Sure. Um, so, they're, as I said, they're in Broken Abyssal. Um, we're going to say at the end of this session, um, since you've been spending some time looking into them, I'll give you a little bit more information. Um, so, uh, cool. Calip has hopped in over here by this campfire and again you see lots of like ruined furniture um you know torn rugs everything looks moldy and mildewy um everything has water damage as this is like an open fort um and the places where it was did have a roof those have all caved in long ago um the people who are scattered about I think she just froze. She may have done. Well, while we're here, we'll catch up with chat. Hey, Funny Joko, welcome hey, in. Chat. Welcome in. Fishy, fishy, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Lots of people here. Yep, JD, I'm doing well. Good. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we have all the uh, everything here is balanced. So, um, if my volume is too loud compared to all the other players. Please let me know. Um, yeah, yeah, she froze. That's okay. We'll figure it out. I think she's doing a reboot right now. There she is. She's back. Sorry, sorry. The computer just, like, shot the bed, so... Um, <laughs> I don't know. My phone. Um, and I'm hoping that I can get it working, but I'll keep doing some narration while... Okay. I yeah, no, that works. We, we know about what it's like. I can, uh, we're good with that. Okay. So sorry. This is my, like, seven-year-old laptop, so. That's okay. The, the theater of the mind is just much more now within yeah. the mind. Okay. Yeah. So, 
I just have to remember what it looks like too. Um, yeah, so so you see all this dilapidated furniture. You see the uh, the remains of what looks to be a traveling party, um, but it looks like a heavily armored, um, well outfitted traveling party. So you've got your rangers, you've got your fighters with their heavy armor, and you seem to have a few like even mages in amongst them. Um, the battle scene. You can definitely see where they inflicted some damage as well, um, but there are no bodies of any other creature besides these people who are scattered about. Are there any animals in the nearby area? Um, good question. Why don't you roll me an investigation check? All right, uh, ten. You need a new die really badly. Yeah. <laughs> the dice jam. I need, to, I need to pay for the upgrade on D and D Beyond to get me like you know yeah. die that actually rolls well. Just get the fuzzy just, die. Just buy some real ones. There, that way you can oh, switch out. There. <laughs> I'm so having funny. the same problem. I'm not gonna lie. I think Hermit's computer is back on, so she's switching over. Okay, cool. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Got. It. There um. We go. <laughs> everything when you start up your computer, everything just boots up at the same. Yeah, it just sounds about right. Yeah. Oh, something just went off. Protocol speed limits there. <laughs> uh, oh, Hermit dropped yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, don't mind the, everything being off, guys. Once Hermit gets back in, it'll be better. This is going great, guys. <laughs> oh, now you make me. Yeah. Is now, the DM. now you're making me work. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. This is part of the course of the okay. indie. I am the map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> Hermit's the map. Oh my god. Okay, this is... <laughs> oh, I'm the DM now. Okay, well. Okay, what? This is... sorry guys. Is so this anyway, what is my rotating DM? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be such an interesting experiment for a game, is that you just rotate the characters in the DM every game? Yeah. I think you should rotate them, like, every time the <laughs> clock chimes or something. <laughs> And you just have to pick up wherever the last person was. Yeah. Um, right. this, okay. I think we're just going to leave it like this till we almost get the there. map back up. Um, I'm almost there. there. That needs to be like a chat redeemable feature is to rotate seats. <laughs> well, <okay. Yeah. laughs> I think that's a great idea. And then I can sit oh, back wow. and do the player character thing. And you guys can run the campaign. <laughs> Twitch, <laughs> Twitch plays D and D. <laughs> that will be a okay, good one. Cool. There is actually, um, there is a weapon that is made that you can actually, when you use it, permanently switch places with whatever you attack. So if <laughs> if the DM has it, they can actually take their monster who has the weapon and attack a player and become that player. Or if a player attacks a monster, they become the DM. <laughs> that is amazing. It does two damage. <laughs> yeah. But it does a Stay lot more. Stay tuned for next session, guys. <laughs> no, that's a legendary. Uh, that's it's a, a crazy legendary one. magic item, though. So good luck getting your hands on it. Yeah, that's that's hey, like DM. I can get my hands on anything. So. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um. Okay. Where were we? Trying to get the map back uh, up. <laughs> right. Um, this is funny. I'm okay. the only person in the right spot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mars so is now the map. Mars yeah. is now the DM. And Harmon is Eight. now Ace and the map. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. Watch stream. Some there we go. The map is perks fixed. of doing it live. Okay, now I just have to 
Okay, there's going to be a little bit of craziness right now, people. Please uh, be patient. So you will go over here. I'm so lucky that I'm not uh, sharing mine today, that I'm not streaming. <laughs> okay, so we'll go over here. We're getting there. I just have to get Raz in, and that is yep. going to be Telcam. Uh, okay, this one's going to take a little bit, guys. Just give me a sec. No patience, we riot. <laughs> okay, riot then. Give us your best shot. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Almost there. Oh, there I am. And this is going perfectly. There we go. Okay. <laughs> We're back. We are. <laughs> Yay. Amazing. That's pretty quick. Thank okay. You. I'm happy with that. Thank you all for the patience. Um, hopefully my computer won't do that again. Um, okay. So <laughs> you're in this camp. They're dead bodies. It's crazy. Go. Uh, you said the goblins were piling loot up around where I am, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what is in that pile that I can see that is worthwhile? So um, they're all in sacks. They each had a sack. And um, it looks like they have some, like, silver platters, um, like some dishes. Um, you've got an assortment of simple weapons. Um, if you want to add to your simple weapon arsenal, you're welcome to take from this, um, or you could try to sell it. Um, they have accumulated about 15 gold pieces each um, in the bags, and you also find uh, several necklaces that seem to have broken, been broken at the clasp, like they've been yanked from something, uh, perhaps the neck of a deceased person. Um, and these necklaces are sort of a standard um, pendant style, um, but they're all the same. And they each have like a this like weird crest on them um, that looks to be like a, a house crest, like somebody's clan or something like that. Do they look valuable, these? necklaces or do they just look like a standard like silver necklace that no one's really going to care about a little bit of both they look standard as if they have been all crafted at the same time um like mass produced almost but they are made of very good quality um gold so you know you could sell them or potentially melt them down and make something else okay i'm gonna attempt to uh sneakily grab those uh the piles of gold from each of the sacks without anyone noticing. Okay. So my sleight of hand, oh great. Jeez. I'm getting a new dice. <laughs> uh, that was a nine, and that's with a plus seven. <laughs> All right. So Caleb is reaching his greedy little hands into these sacks. Um, you all noticed it. <laughs> and uh, do you want to do anything about it? No. <laughs> okay. I'd like to just wander the camp looking for anything odd. Okay. Okay, so that's 45. Um, as... Did anyone else do anything about me taking these 45 gold pieces? No. No, not even you tell. All, oh, oh, Heidi, pretend, oh, holy one. I'm, I'm gonna pretend not to know about it. <laughs> I think it's in everyone's best interest to do that. I was gonna say, yeah, you're used to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'm actually, so I'm actually gonna uh, try and follow the the smoke deeper into the building. Mm. The smoke is coming from outside the building, um, oh. near the campsite. Oh, then I'll I'll go outside then. Okay. Um, it's sort of burning through the cloth of that tent, um, right, right here. And uh, Ace, as you are venturing in, again, you see more of what I was describing before, the broken furniture, the moss-eaten linens, um, but you do see this circular, well, part of a circular room that still exists. And as you walk into it, 
you see this rune on the floor that is glowing, um, and there is blood spattered all about it. That doesn't seem great. Uh, do I recognize it? I'm assuming probably not. I mean, you can roll me a history check and give it a shot. All right, let me go for that. Uh, we've got an 11. No, you do not recognize it. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna touch it. You touch it. Your hand burns slightly, but nothing else happens. I'm gonna stop touching it. Okay. Might be a good idea. Does it um, does it stop burning or is it attached to me? Like it it stops burning, but you do have a small burn on your hand from where you made contact, and you're going to take a uh, one hit point of damage. Right. And uh, Tempest, what are you up to while these guys are doing some exploration? Um, probably still just attempting to decipher the books. Okay. Sounds okay. good. I'm going to head towards the hole that the goblins disappeared down. Okay. And you do not in. see where they disappeared. You just sort of um, saw them fade into the ground. But... Um, if you go and investigate a little further, I can scroll up, you find um, outside of the fort, there is the top of a well. That's right up here. Oops. Okay. Um, I am going to pick up the largest piece of rubble that I can handle and drop it down the well. You hear a splashing sound. Anything else or just a splash? Is there no... Just a splash. Hmm. But while you are looking down, you do see the ladder. Being, being not the, the brave type, Caleb is, Caleb is going to go and uh, discuss with Tell about the ladder that I just found. Uh, Tell, um, there's a well back here that uh, you might want to go into. Uh, there's a nice ladder that looks like it's leading to where these uh, creatures are coming from, and there might be some unholiness down there that you might want to take care of. Is this a trick? I'm going to do a deception check. Okay. <laughs> There's a well. And that's a 17. I'll, 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 I'll count it out with an insight. Let's, let's hope for the best here. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I'm going to wander back to the group conversing, rubbing my uh, okay. burn fingers. I have no real reason to trust you. But, if it is true what you say, then it is worth investigating. Good god, man, what happened to your fingers? It looks like some people may have uh, died to some sort of sacrifice. Something magical. A magical sacrifice? I mean, that's just a guess. You want to see it? I would, yes. All right, come here. Probably best to check that before I check this mysterious well. Mysterious okay. well, eh? All right, come on. Oh, all right. I'm back in and I, I lead him with. over. Yeah. Is Caleb following this? No, well, he's just kind of lounging around, poking around the uh, other dead bodies to see what's if there's anything good on them. Okay. Um, we'll say that the goblins did most of the looting for you, but um, you can find perhaps an occasional knick-knack, we'll just say worth a couple of silver pieces each. Um, so Ace and Tell make their way back to the circular room, and you see the sigil in the ground, um, which is still glowing, albeit slightly fainter than when Ace first saw it. And you see, as you are watching it, 
it does seem to get a little bit fainter and a little bit fainter. Um, there seems to be a bit of a heat radiating off of it, and you can see that it has been sort of painted on the ground and glowing, um, and that there's almost like little scorch marks around the edges of it um, where it's been painted on the ground. Sorry. Thank you, Fishy, for the gifted sub. Much appreciated. Yeah. Gifted sub. Thank you so much. Yeah, DJ, now you get to do them. Oh! <laughs> oh <no>. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Fishy. You're awesome, man. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> Fish, Fishy's an awesome guy. If you guys don't follow him, please uh, give him a follow. Definitely will. He is a great streamer. I've been watching him for a while. <laughs> That's awesome. It's close, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining in our uh, campaign today. That goes for everybody in the chat as well. Absolutely. Uh, Lassie I'll Archer, thank you for the biddies. Here. Okay, let's keep going. So I'm still poking around. Tell and Ace are uh, fixing yeah, Ace's so wounds. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Did you actually take damage from the from the scorching or no? Oh, there's a hype train. Okay. Well, yeah. Choo -choo. It hurt. Uh, Thank you, guys. <laughs> let me let me see that, and uh, I'll give you a healing word. Why not? Great. Thanks. So, please take eleven points of healing. All right. So your hand stops blistering and oh, the skin geez. becomes baby fresh. Um, right. Tell, do you want to do an investigation of any sort? I would sort? like to do an investigation. I, I basically, so I would like to kind of investigate like if, if, if I've seen this, the, the shape of the sigil before, if I can kind of recognize any of the markings. Um, <laughs> as to either who would make such a sigil or what it's made for. Okay. Um, so, roll me an investigation check. Sorry, or guys. History check. Fishy's going crazy. So many people I'll, just got I'll subs go into history. the channel. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Fishy. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for the biddies. We're going to try to concentrate, but this is awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can I've make got... you an NPC if you'd like. <laughs> It just appears right now. Um, Tr yeah, tr a triton named history. Fishy pops up in the well. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Sure, uh, we're making that cannon. He yells up to Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> How did I get down here? <laughs> Where do I come from? Where do um, I go? So you're Where not do I come from? You're not a spider. Caleb, I, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um. So, sorry, yeah. Raz. What did you get for your I investigation? Got, I got an, uh, eleven on my history. Okay, so you also don't really recognize it, though. You're like, I think this is a magic thing. I think there's magic a brew. Um. Mm. So from the hole, you hear um some yelling. <laughs> And uh, Caleb seems to be conversing with someone. So I'm going to call back down to this uh, Triton that just popped up in the well. I have no clue where you came from. What? How don't you know? I just woke up here. I went on a bit of a bender last night. And <laughs> this is where I found myself. You know how it is. Yeah, I do. Tempest and I have done that a few times. I do know what a what a bender is like. Okay, guys, you just hit me on another on the major hype train. Fishy, you are awesome. Thank you so much for all the support, man. Everyone who just got gifted a sub, you can now use all of my tier one Snorlax emotes. That Hello. is Mr. F Small Friend and all of his emotions. So enjoy them, everyone. <laughs> We are 52% of the way into a level 5 hype train, guys. This is awesome. That's insane. <laughs> um, That's wild. And it has almost hit me to my uh, my goal, too. So if I, if there are two more subs, 
before the end of this month, there will be a makeup stream next month where my daughter will be doing my makeup on stream for you guys. <laughs> so, well, now you have to. just a note. <laughs> that sounds so cute. Yeah, hitting level five. If we finish this, guys, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, so does does this Triton seem at all angry or helpful? Which one? Okay, well, just from what first glance. <laughs> okay, first there's a... hearing his voice. So, guys, there is now a makeup stream next month and a level five Ooh. hype train. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, no problem, Ghost. Ghost? I, Ghost's uh, Discord is uh, acting up, so Ghost, if you just type in here, I can talk for you, no problem. Okay, sorry. Back, back to the campaign. <laughs> all having yeah. technical difficulties today. Yeah, it's except just for one Bali, of those days. who's just raking in the hype. Oh, mine was uh, no, I was almost late to this. I, I had some difficulties too. <laughs> No, this is awesome, guys. Level 5 hip hype train, and I got the 20 subs. You guys are all amazing. Thank you. Um, I won't lie. My only technical difficulty was trying to get the note to balance. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to say, I love the, like, the little seat that he has. Is that your microphone? That's my microphone. <laughs> That's so cute. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, he, he, he yells back up. Um... I uh, I think there might be some dead bodies down here. It smells terrible. Um, and you can sense that he is not a threat, at least. Um, though whether he's helpful or not, you can't tell. Okay. Um... So I'm going to call over to Tell and Ace and try to yell really loudly for Tempest, who's uh, being a bookworm. Um, hey, guys! Um, we've got some weird Triton over here calling up, saying that it's really smelly down this well. Tell, come help. We need to cleanse it. I'll be right there. I will also shuffle over. As you guys walk over, the Triton is emerging from the well, climbing up the ladder. He is covered in like a green gook that you would find at the bottom of an, an a abandoned well where sort of nature has taken back over. The algae is thick on him and he looks a little bit like Ace um, with this sort of sheen of green. Um, he takes off some of the ick and brushes himself down and then says to you, thanks for waking me up. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, did you notice any goblins or other creatures down there? I did feel something light step on my back. Um, and there was a small hole in the side of the well, but I didn't see anything besides that. Did it smell down there too, or just in the water where you were? Mostly in the water. I have to say, the smell of decomposing bodies, ugh, not as pleasant as they make it seem. And if they don't make it seem that pleasant. And Thank you, Rez. <laughs> yeah, no, I just feel like he, you know, felt a little bit left out. <laughs> so Tempest, Tempest probably heard um, Caleb yelling. But, and would have been, uh, at first, kind of shocked and go, maybe I should go help them. And then the moment he hears, there's a well we should check out, Tempest is immediately going to lose all interest and go back to reading. Sounds good. So, um, this new Triton is going to extend his greasy, uh, mucky hand and say, The name's Fishy. Nice to meet y'all. I'm going to take his hand and say, welcome in, Fishy. Shake it nice and hard. Um, now, you said there's a hole down there. How, how big is it? Does it look like it would fit us pretty easily? Uh, not really. 
you're all a little bit bigger than uh, than the hole was. I mean, you could maybe squeeze. Definitely not this big guy here, he says, gesturing to tell. Um, but maybe his little one, he says, gesturing to Nook. Oh. Um. Well, we tried. Uh. I'm not going to let him go down there on his own. Fair enough. Well, it's been good getting to know you, but uh, I want to take a bath. So I'm going to head off towards uh, home. I hope y'all have a good time. Perhaps if you're ever in Urtenmore, I'll see you there. Well, thanks yes, for the perhaps. In perhaps. Thank you for the information, Fishy. Have a good day. Farewell, and he man. starts just sort of walking into the woods, um, stumbling over things, clearly a little bit uh, hungover. <laughs> Seems like a generous guy. Seems like a so is there any grass or, like, is there a good amount of grass that I can wipe this goo off my hands? Of course. Right, I was trying to be Wipe nice. away. <laughs> so I, after Fishy's out of the picture, I just uh, wipe my hands and try to get them as clean as possible. All right. And then any of the leftover stuff, I just kind of pat on my pants. <laughs> All right. You smell slightly worse than you did before. Yeah. I haven't showered in a few days. I'm, that's normal. <laughs> All right. So um, you guys are on the edge of this camp. You've just had a chance encounter with um, the town drunk. <laughs> Sorry, fishy. <laughs> um, and you know that the hole at the bottom of this well is pretty small, perhaps only goblin-sized or nook-sized. Okay. Are there any um, pieces of rubble big enough to put on top of the well? The uh, the I think that that all of you could manage to put something, oh, at least over the hole um, in the grate of the well. Okay. Hey, Tell. Um, I think we should probably yeah. cover up that well to uh, to to stop these goblins or whatever other creatures are going to be slithering out of that hole down there. Do you want to come give me a hand? There's a nice big something I agree with. There's a nice big slab over here that I think we could get up there. Uh, yeah. Let me try. Tempest, we might need you too. Uh, Tempest at this point is going to just sort of give an exasperated sigh, uh, close the book and start wandering back over. While they're doing this, uh, I'm gonna go scuff some dirt on top of the glowing rune. Mm. Good idea. Just try to scuff it over. Um, as you toss some dirt over the paint that is on the ground, Paint, blood, you can't really tell what it is. Um, the rune stops glowing altogether, and it's just left with sort of the charred outline of it. Great. Um, I'll say, too, as this happens, you feel a weight lift off your shoulders. All right. Oh, that's good, too. I feel good about what I'm doing. Also, I'm going to give you an inspiration for uh, uh, just holding the rune. Um, so you can now, do you know how that works? No, not in the slightest. So with an inspiration point, you can roll with advantage on some check. Oh, cool. Great. Oh, sorry. I didn't, um, I didn't yeah, put advantage, it's... just advantage in. Sorry. <laughs> what? I, I, I have icons for that normally, but I didn't, uh, I, I didn't bring that in. Sorry. I'll. For the next next one i will but yeah ace you do it so that uh, just means you you have to pick it before you do your roll though so if it's something you know you might have trouble with then you say i'm gonna use my uh inspiration and then you just roll two die and take the high one sounds great yeah it is one of those things as well where you only do it once per game 
And so because of it, people are very, very careful with when they use it, and they end up never actually using it during the game. And so it's a bit of a shame, because it can give you a bit of a bump in, uh, like, narratively very important moments. Yeah. So it's always worth considering. Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, chat... Yeah, good to hang on to. Chat can actually uh, redeem some of the iron ore um, to give advantage or disadvantage in any of the stream games that I do, too. So they're allowed to, to give us advantage and disadvantage. The advantages we're allowed to use at any time, disadvantage has to be used at the next turn. <laughs> Ooh. Damn. I have enough iron ore for that, but I'm also DM, so I can impose disadvantage whenever I want. So Fishy just gave... <laughs> yeah, but they're also allowed to give you disadvantage, Hermit. Oh, that's true, that's true. Fishy just advantage, gave me an uh, advantage. Okay. So on your next check, you have advantage. Or is it advantage, advantage is anytime? whenever what you want. What did you just say? Advantage is just okay. like an inspiration, so, yeah. So essentially, you have an inspiration point as well, Caleb. Yep. Um, okay. So what do you guys do? Um, so do uh, we, we... So we've got the the block on top there. Um, we notice yeah. Ace um, playing around with that no longer shiny thing. Um, I'm going to head over and talk to Ace. So, Ace, what did you notice? What you mean? With this uh, this rune that you've been playing with. The one that burnt you. I just, I just put dirt on it. And? Well, now it's not glowing I mean, and there's dirt on it i suppose i must have stopped the ritual somehow probably i just i didn't it burnt me i didn't like it so i put dirt on it would you guys like to explore more around the edges of the rune yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna walk around the runes just to see what uh comes out Okay. So, uh, even though the rune has stopped glowing, um, or actually probably because the rune has stopped glowing, you can now see some details of the setup here for whatever spell was being cast. Um, there are many skulls, um, and if you see, there's like five different spots. Um, there's a skull in each of them, and in the center is a hyena skull. Or some dog-like skull. You might not know it's a hyena, but I'm telling you now. It's a hyena skull. There. You just happen to know. <laughs> um, there's also some spell books um, scattered about on the edge of the rune. Um, far further away, because as you can see on the skulls, they're all very charred um, from whatever this rune was doing. Um, blood is spattered across all of it, and you can see that the that a couple of the bodies that are scattered about um, or that were scattered about have been dragged over here. Um, and you can tell, you know, like there's a nice trail of blood. Um, and it seems that they have taken some part in this ritual, though they are not on the rune itself. What other type uh, of skulls are there beyond the hyena skull? Um, they they all look human. I'll take one of them. One of the human skulls. Yeah, yeah. All right. Tempest is going to walk over to the uh, hyena-looking skull, and he's just going to pick it up and cast Shocking Grasp on it. Okay. Uh, roll me damage. That's going to be an eight. All right. The skull shatters in your hand. Tempest is just going to look satisfied with himself and then go sit back down on the blocked off well and open up the book. Lovely. All right. Um, the bone pieces of the hyena are now scattered amongst the rest of the rubble here. Okay, so uh, 
Okay, so I gotta dab it up, so I gotta dab. But Fishy gave disadvantage to Hermit, so Hermit, on the next roll you have to do, you have to take a disadvantage on it. Cool. And then for everyone who wants my dab... Didn't lose the hat this time. I'm well very done. happy proud of that well one. <laughs> um, very well done. Good dabbing, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so this rune has been deact deactivated. Um, you got some, or Ace has a skull now. Tempest broke a skull. Tell, what are you up to? Uh, I think. I might just go outside again and actually properly investigate this tent that the fire was, or the smoke at least was coming from, because I don't All think right. I did. So you make your way over to the tent and you see inside of it a sleeping roll and a pack, like a backpack. Right. Okay. I open up the pack. Inside are two books and a lot of ledgers, as well as a pen, a quill pen, and a bottle of ink. This, this is a scholar's pack. Ooh, okay, and I'm guessing the bedroll is just there, like no one's actually inside of it. No. Okay. It does seem like slashed, like the rest of the tent. Okay, though. but it is—it is very much just smoke that's coming from here. Like, there's no—is there an actual fire around here? So the bushes surrounding um, where the camp stove was um, are like seared embers at this point, um, and they're still okay. emitting some smoke. But besides that, there's no like, like actual fire. No. So this this is someone's camp. I'm guessing by the fact that they left their stuff here. I don't think they actually went away permanent. I don't think they would have just left their stuff behind. I think they're meant to come back here at some point. Okay, am am I gonna am I able to do a perception check to see uh if I can figure out where all the the scuffle and the battle dissipated to after where all these dead bodies came from? Sure. Um, now, do you want that to be perception? Yeah, roll me an investigation. investigation. Oh, crap. Of let's course you let's see how up. well you can plot this battle. Okay. Which die? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> this better be good. I got plus zero on investigation. <laughs> 19! <laughs> yes! Nice. Just to prove okay. it. <laughs> 19! <laughs> okay. With a 19... Caleb decides to take a journey back in time and see if he can sort of unravel the mystery of what has happened here. Using his investigator's eye, he sees that um, this door over here has a big scuff mark on the inside of it, looking like it was banged open at one point, um, and though it is now swung closed. Um, and it seems that the start of the battle emanated from this part of the map. Um, and he can tell this because the few um, bodies that are scattered in this area look like they were taken by surprise. None of them have their weapons out. Um, a lot of them just have bloody neck wounds, like someone slit their throat without them even having time to react. As the battle continues over into this area, um, the knights definitely seem to have reacted. Um, everyone has their weapons out here, um, and the further that you get from this sort of start of the battle, the more vicious the attack seems to be. So while here it seems almost clean, cold, and calculated, like we're just here to make a kill, um, the further you go, the bodies are more jarringly disfigured. Um, so the further you go, the fewer limbs they have, um, the more, uh, meat is missing from their bones, and, um, the more brutal it seems the blood splatter, uh, would indicate the battle was. Um, the bodies themselves are cold, so you know that this battle happened at least 
I would say at least a day ago, based on the rigor mortis and the bloat of the bodies and the smell of decomposition. Um, they all look waxy and pale, and um, you can tell, well, let's say you can tell that uh, the blood that has been spilled um, near the ritual site is a bit fresher than the blood spilled near the bodies that were left um, just to rot where they lay. Um, and then the direction of the battle, it seems that whatever this force of fury that wrapped through this camp, um, it, its direction was out through the door in which you guys came, so towards the road. Okay, so after I finish this investigation, I'm going to call Tell Tempest and Acer over, and I'm going to explain to them. So um, I, I just did a quick poke around here, guys, and I just noticed that uh, out this door here, and I point to the eastern door, um, is where it seems to all have started. They seem to have come out of the forest and burst in and killed all these people um, by surprise, it seemed. It didn't seem like they were making much noise, but once that happened they continued out into this area um where ace where you got your burn um this is the area that they started uh, actually having to put up a big battle um and they continued on and then they went down south uh, back where we came so it seems like this might be the knoll party that we ran into that hit the town back there that we were running away from um that that's just my thoughts um on this but uh what are your guys' thoughts about heading into the woods? I believe we could. Just now, uh, I investigated the tent outside, and it seems that the fire that was originally here emanated from the woods. So they must have set this place on fire and then retreated into it. Also, I found I, what I, I believe like to be a scholar's pack. Oh, you, you do too. How long you know, for did a you, vacation? How long did you say they were dead for? Um, they they look like they've been dead for a long time, Tempest. They're uh, you know, they're cold and waxy looking, so I'm guessing it's probably a day or two at least. Um, uh, give, giving them enough time to come around the the lake as it seemed they did when they attacked the town. Okay. Then let us go. Uh, okay, I cannot voice the tempest at present. Interesting. <clears throat> Yay. All right. Tempest, um, can you say that again? I missed that. He was having trouble voicing Tempest. His throat. Uh, oh, was okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, you Tempest is happy to. Te tempest is happy to go go for a walk in the woods sounds good okay yeah C caleb likes the woods it gets the bright uh, sun out of his uh his his eyes that aren't still aren't after 140 years on the surface totally used to the uh the bright ball of fire in the sky <laughs> honestly it seems like a bad idea to have a ball of fire in the sky I, yeah, I cannot dispute that for some reason. But fireball All right, is such well, a good um, stuff. It, you know, but it gives us heat and purpose, and, you know, nature is w wonderful. Also, how is Nook doing? Nook is doing pretty well, though he's looking kind of hungry. Oh, okay. Um, pretty sure I have something that I could probably give him. You probably have some dried meats or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. I'll, I'll, in your I'll, rations. I'll, I'll take like a small bit from my rations, kind of like grind it up in my hand, and then I'll just mm -hmm. like, eat it. As you are walking along, he playfully nibbles at the food, and then as he realizes he likes it, he starts fighting more ferociously. Um, and I need you to roll me, uh, let's say. Uh, just a dex, a dex saving throw to see if he bites your hand. Reflex. Uh oh, okay. That's an 11. Um, 
Well, how about I have Nook roll as well, okay. and then I can impose my disadvantage. Just, uh, Let's see. What's your armor class? 18. Okay, even with that uh, disadvantage, Nook still bites through the armor on your hand, um, and you're going to take... Uh, two piercing damage right in your palm. When he notices that he's bitten you, he looks up at you and is like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. But in like baby talks, so like, oh, it sounds so mad. I don't know what babies sound like. <laughs> Who does? Parents, I guess. <laughs> babies might. <laughs> I can help them. They forget at some point, apparently. Um, after several years. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll basically pet him over the head gun, like, it's okay. Just be careful. Don't do that again. A single tear also. rolls from his eye as he pats your hand and looks sorrowfully up at you. It's okay. Sometimes we don't mean to hurt the people close to us, and then we do. We have to know. Just have to be careful about it. Make sure that they know that we don't mean any of it. You have a parenting plus one. Oh. <laughs> uh, we'll say your skill in parenting has increased. And uh, does anyone have anything to say to um, tells signs of affection for this little cat that you have found? Caleb just rolls his eyes and heads out towards the <laughs> woods. Okay. So you guys are headed to the west or the east? East, where are you going back the way that they came, yeah. or are you East continuing on woods. towards Urtenmore? East into the woods. Okay. Yes. Um. Okay, so you're walking east into the woods, and you see the tracks of um, some sort of man-shaped foot uh, with thick claws on the end. You can assume that they are from gnolls, um, but it's not just gnoll tracks here. Um, you also see big paw tracks, perhaps those of a hyena, as at this point you guys know that hyenas tend to travel with gnolls. Um, there are also some thicker tracks, um, almost troll in size, and uh, you do see some human prints as well. Which way are these prints heading? Are they heading west or east? They're heading west. Okay, so they're heading back the way we came. So I'm not overly concerned. I'm just going to keep strolling uh, in the woods and uh, try to give my eyes a little bit of a rest from the bright sun. As you continue to walk, you just see some more um, more of these tracks, uh, broken brambles, um, the... General foliage seems to have been trampled by a very large group passing through. So it seems like this uh, forest is pretty safe, guys. Uh, what do we want to do? Do we want to uh, keep heading in here or just head up through, uh, continue on our way to the to cities? I, I do need to get a little more gold in my pocket. As much as I want to uh, vindicate whatever has happened here, I don't think that we have all that much to go on. Well, they headed south, well, so this isn't even the way they, they went. This is just where they came from, Tell. Yeah, which, which means that we don't actually know necessarily where they went. I mean, they could have gone back, but they might not if have. We... If we go to their source, we might find their motivations. If you care. What kind of a weird question is that? Of course I care. All right. Very well, then. Then I have my so, vote. So the two options are to follow the tracks back where they came from, or to follow wherever the party went. I think we've come to a consensus. We're going to head to where they came from. Yep. Find okay. the source. Sounds good. Um, cool. 
so you continue on down this path um, of the broken branches and devastation to woodland critters and uh just, just, you continue for just a quick note yeah. Temp tempest said do i care oh <laughs> generally not sure whether uh he does or not <laughs> so probably not he, he seems he's, like he's, kind of just along for the ride yeah, at this point he a little just seems ace a little aloof. so i think he's going to be following us but not really really caring to keep uh keep up as well as he needs okay. to if anything if we get there and there are more of those gnolls out there you get to beat them up and know that they are guilty and therefore deserve it so as you continue along, it's again just this woodland devastation um, until eventually you reach a clearing where it seems that some sort of makeshift camp was set. So there were a few fires scattered around like fire pits um, and there are some charred bones sitting in those fire pits um, as well as one bloated hyena corpse um, off to the side of the clearing. Sorry, my stomach is growling. At the mention of an hyena corpse, yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, so tasty. <laughs> nummy, nummy. Mm. I mean, everyone has a taste for what they have a taste for. <laughs> it's, it's true. Can't really judge. Don't don't yuck someone else's yum. <laughs> Okay, is, is Alright, so you guys are in this clearing? We're what in the clearing. Doing? Is there any obvious uh, paths that this this party seemed to have come from? Surprisingly, no. It seems like it was multiple parties that met up here. I'm going to again look for some animals. Preferably uh, of the bird type. There are some birds in the area. It seems like they are just returning after being spooked off about a day prior. All right. Um, I'd like to, you know, pull some treats out of my my pack and try to like lure them over to me. See if they... I can get a talk with one of them. Is there a crow around? Of course, there's always a crow around where there's been a little bit of devastation. Um, one flutters over to you and starts pecking at the food in your hand. Excellent. Great. Um, I'd like to cast Beast Bond on the crow okay. that is touching me. Um, I'd like to try to find out from it what happened here. Who who was here? Hello. Hello, no friend. Hello. What, what gathered here? Oh, oh, very terrible! It was, it was not sightly. Not sightly. How? Lots of blood. Lots of murder. Here in this, this clearing. Mm, yes, everything smelled of blood and murder. Who did the murdering? Who who caused all this chaos? No, no murdering. It smelled of murder. It smelled of murder, but the murder did not happen here. Big, big dogs. Big dogs with gnashy teeth. Big dogs with gnashy teeth run after big dogs like men. Okay. So, big dogs... On four legs, chase the big dogs on two legs. Yes, yes. Not good. Birds not like it. Good to know. Good to know. Are they still here? No, no. We are here now. They are not here. Okay. Good. Is there anyone hiding nearby? Oh, no. We would not come back here if any of those terrible creatures remained. Oh. Good, good. Have some extra. Oh, and thank I will, you. I will release the, the, the crow and turn back to my compatriots. 
So, I've got bad news and some worse news. Which do you want? Caleb's eyes light up with the thought of the chaos of bad and bad, badder news. <laughs> so, and he, he says, both. I, I, either of them work for me. Well, you know those, those dog men who didn't seem to like us very much before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like there was some more of them, as I think is clear by the footprints that we saw on the way here, right? Right. Um, there's something they seem to be afraid of that is bigger than them. And uh, it seems to have been been chasing them through this clearing. Mm. Some giant, uh, some sort of dog. Sounds giant interesting. Dog. Sounds like a good time. They're not. They are not here. There is no one here near us right now. So we are safe. Do you know which way but, this giant uh, dog went? Presumably after the dogmen. We saw their tracks, I'm assuming probably went after them. I didn't ask though. Hmm. So they came into that fort, murdered a bunch of people, came to this clearing where they ran into a large dog creature. That they were at the clearing the first, then they went to the fort. Oh, I see. So they fled from the giant dog creature and then killed a bunch of people. Something about this seems off to me. It is certainly an odd shape. This sounds more like a driving force like us drow do to the goblins. Like kind of an asshole move to me. Do what you have the to, to is, survive. The question is, why were they scared of the dog creature? I mean, I I say dog creature because because that's what you said. Obviously, that's not a a real um, idea of what it actually is. Because we don't have one. Maybe this creature. Uh, as is all of this is master. going on. The crow that Ace was just talking to flies back suddenly from the edge of the clearing um, and starts pecking at Ace's ear. I pay attention. Um, it's pecking at your ear. Do you speak with small animals? Can you? Is that something you can do? Uh, no. I, don't, I mean, I've got I've got beast bond. That's all I know. Okay, we're just going to say that even though that was released, you can still hear his, his voice. Um, explosion! It, explosion! We hear it. There's going to be a quake, a big quake in the world. How big is this explosion? Where I need at? you to, I need help. My, my murder has flown off. I need help. Feel free to travel with me if you like. Where do you need help? What do you need? I need to find my murder. They went to go and see the source of the explosion. All right. Which direction? Um, he flutters up and points the way you've come. <laughs> okay. I'll turn back to my compatriots. Uh, apparently there's a large explosion happening. Uh, Just as you say this. The sound waves from some far off rumbling hit you, and you feel almost like a breeze blow past you. Yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, and we should probably head towards it. It, it sounds. Sounds like we, we do. should go. Yeah, we should go. And Ace just travels quickly in that direction. Uh, Tell will also follow quickly. Tempest has flown uh, straight up 30 feet to get a better look. After saying, 
explosions are good enough sound good enough for me i'm on it <laughs> so um as tempest flies up he's going to see um in the distance in the far distance you see a huge plume of smoke, much bigger than the one that drew you to the original fire. Um, it's past the camp that you were just at, um, and it seems to be coming from the walls of Urtenmore. He can share this with you if he wants. Yeah, Tem I'm just going to assume that we're going to assume this with Tempest you. has a shared. <laughs> Tempest's yeah. uh, Discord isn't working right now. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I think after he calls it down, I, I believe me have K Caleb having all of his business, uh, to attend to, he's going to look at the guys and say, I'm off. I'm going to go try to see what's going on in this town. I need my money. And, uh, if it's burning, I won't get it. And he takes off into the woods nimbly as an elf can. Excellent. All right, so you head back the way you came. You pass by the devastation of this little fort that you happened upon, um, and you make your way back out onto the road. It's only about another mile or two to get to the edge of the beginning of the settlements outside of Urtenmore. Since Urtenmore is like one of the biggest cities in the land, um, it has lots of like offshoot settlements, um, lots of farmland on the outside, and you can see that. Um, about a mile down the road. Beyond that is the big cloud of smoke. So, like, in the direction of the city. Um, are you going to continue down the road? Caleb is. Not caring what okay. the rest of the party's doing. Caleb wants his money. <laughs> Assuming you all are doing this, you can tell me otherwise. Um, you walk down the road. About 20 mi minutes pass and you are at the edge of this farmland that surrounds Urtenmore, and you can see the walls of the city. Around it is a massacre of the biggest proportions. Um, it seems that whatever villagers had been, had the um, misfortune of being out and about at the time of this rolling force of devastation, um, they lay dead in their tracks. And up against the walls of Urtenmore, where the main gate stands, there is a huge battering ram, some catapults, and surrounding all of this are hundreds of gnolls and their various compatriots. How far off are they? About a mile or two. Okay. But... We're going to say it's very clear, so you can see them. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, no, I'm just... moving quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb pull, pull, puts on the brakes a bit and slows down, seeing this giant pack. As you advance more slowly, you hear the cries. We're going to actually say you're, you're within um, hearing distance, but, like wouldn't be noticed by the gnolls unless you were to make a loud sound or something like that. But you hear cries from the inside of the town screaming, We need reinforcements! We need reinforcements! They're coming up through the walls! How many gnolls is this? And, and compatriots? This is a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. This is like an entire army, it seems. <laughs> It does seem like that, yes. More than you could ever imagine the gnolls amassing before. Yeah. And does it all seem to be on the southern edge of the town, or does it seem to be encircling the whole thing, give or take? You guys are coming in from, like, the, the eastern side of the town. Um, okay, so we're heading west into and the yeah, town. It's, it's all concentrated on that one main gate through which the road you've been traveling on leads. Okay, and the city, is it, uh, are, is there a lot of woods and cover around the, the city, or is it just, like, really open with um, tall walls? very open. Okay, so you wouldn't, we wouldn't be Open able to, with tall walls. We wouldn't be able to sneak around this war party. 
Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to to tell Tempest and Ace and just uh, just say, okay, this seems like it's a little in over my heads. I don't know about you guys, um, except you, Tempest. I'm sure you want to just run in there and bash some skulls, um, but I I don't think. Oh, what's that, guys? Did you hear oh, that? Here. Turn towards the source of the sound. Who, who are you? You see the head of a young girl poking up out of a hole in the ground. Hey, stars, please. My father is in there. Could you help me? I understand the situation is helpless, but I am not one to deny a cry for help. Especially not a literal one. So you so you make your way over to um, this hole in the ground, which you see is actually a sewer grate. Um, and give me one second to pull that up. Uh, um, let's see. It's the sewer of the aforementioned gut hole. Exactly. There it is. I sense a cliffhanger coming. <laughs> so, you see this sewer grate. And a little girl poking her head out. And she says, My father is in the royal guard. And he went into work this morning. And then this ambush happened. And I'm so scared. And I want to go help him. But I'm so scared. And I don't want to go into the sewer alone. It's all right. You don't have to. So you'll come with me? Down we go. Thank you. Yes, we will. As you say that, she clasps her hands together and is like, excellent, I shall lead the party. Uh, this sewer leads right down <laughs> through... Uh, <laughs> Excuse sorry. me. Um, she, she just seems uh, to change her demeanor completely and says, this sewer leads right down through and under all of this farmland, and we can pop up near the Capitol building in the center of town. Will you come? You really changed your attitude very quickly there. I uh, want to roll an insight on yeah, this I small want to. child. <laughs> I am suspicious. All right. I got a 25. I got, a, I got a 16. I rolled above a 10. <laughs> um, I'm going to roll an okay. intimidation trying to uh, scare her back into crying. Okay. Um, and those that's of you a 24. Rolling an investigation. All right. Those of you rolling an investigation, uh, you do seem, notice that something is a little off about this girl. She doesn't seem to look... Um, battered or beaten or covered in dirt. She actually seems to be wearing almost like noble clothes. Um, and it's very strange that she's just popped out of the sewer when the grate itself, um, she moved up and over her head um, and it must weigh upwards of 60 or 70 pounds. Um, while she looks to be about nine or 10, her um, word choice is also that of an older person. Um, and as Caleb tries to intimidate her, uh, what are you going to try to do to intimidate her? So Caleb uh, just kind of looks at the girl and puffs up his little slim elf demeanor and looks at her and says, You know what? I don't like your attitude here there, little missy. Why don't you tell us exactly what you mean? And I'm glaring at her with very evil looking eyes as if I want to murder her. As you do this. She gets a sort of sour pucker on her face. It says, Listen here. I was just trying to offer a little guidance to your motley crew. If you don't wish to accompany me, you don't have to. And then she winks and dips down into the, um, into the cavern. Or into the sewer. I don't trust this girl. <laughs> yeah, nor do I. Nor do I. 
A little girl like that, when a drow comes up to her and does what I just did, would normally go back into that tearful state she was in, and she winked at me. It's not only that, it's that she was crying before to get us to help her, and we said we would, and now that you said we might not, she seems completely unfazed. From below, she, you hear her voice waft up and say, Oh, did I mention there's quite a bit of treasure down here? Caleb jumps straight I don't down. Care. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's gold! I'm in! All right. And as you land at the bottom of the sewer, um, since we only have 10 minutes left and that's not enough time, um, I think we're going to call it here, if that sounds good. Yep, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, we can just have a quick chat and then we can raid. I know Wanganator is on, so we could uh, we could run yes. into him a couple minutes early. I'm sure he won't mind that. All right, awesome. At the pace that we're moving, this is going to be five sessions, I think. Um, uh, so as long as you guys are cool with that, um, yes, I, I was hoping to get. I, I have a bit mm -hmm. of bad news though, because mm -hmm. I know we're supposed to play in two weeks yep yes uh, unfortunately i will be on an airplane by that point because i have to fly and see my parents okay okay so um i won't be available that day maybe well, we'll, we it's... might do a one shot then we i've got a couple that we can do that uh we could pull yeah. in a player or two and just do a quick one shot in two weeks that's fine yeah alternatively i'm not super fussed about tell being controlled by dm I'm okay. perfectly happy with that as well if you decide to go with that. So. Okay. Yeah, we can discuss. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about this on the Discord, but we will be back tentatively in two weeks. Um, and, I don't know, I'll post something on my channel, and Bali can post something on his, and the rest of you can post something. We'll, we'll figure it out, though. Yeah, we'll get um, it sorted. But essentially, yes, you've all dropped into the sewer... You hear the giggling of what seems to be a little girl further ahead, and you're about to enter into a maze of damp, dark, what we were supposed to do today. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's what happens when you have the chaotic evil who really just goes anywhere and does whatever he wants. <laughs> It's cool. I'm happy to to <laughs> extend this. Um, I've been having a great time being DM for you guys, yeah. and as long as you don't mind the pace that we're moving at, um, we have the climactic finale, hopefully in two sessions. So nice. okay. now, just just before anything else goes on, have the rest of you joined me, or am I down there alone with this cackling girl? <laughs> I feel like we have to join you, but well, you don't have to. Oh, you really, really you really don't like me I mean, now. <laughs> you don't have, have to. to because of a sense of duty. <laughs> yeah. But I just I'm I just, just waiting to, to see if you set up any traps. Also true. Like. <laughs> I, I just love how and the tables just just been for the academic curiosity at this point. All right. Oh, in Tempest, I wanted to tell you um, from the books that you were reading, um, you did gain a little bit more information about Yinogu, who is this uh, this idol, this demon idol that the gnolls worship. Um, so you're a little bit more, um, we'll just say you have an advantage on history checks that have to do with Yinogu. Okay. Um, yeah, so is that good? We're good to leave it there? Yeah. Um, anyone have any yep. questions as we're wrapping up? Um, I'm just gonna just gonna remind that I was given advantage. Ace has his inspiration still uh, okay. for the next run. Let me write this down. Um, and I do want to thank everyone who helped get me to a level five hype train. Um, oh, yeah. I got 21 Ooh. subs, 850 biddies. Um, thank you, uh, Wiley. I'm going to say GB Wiley. Thank you very much for the follow. I did get a lot of follows. Uh, Pazuni, thank you for the follow. Um, Sidaxum, uh, Downby Danny, Peter Pasty, Elassie Archer, 
um, Freshorex, Darius, uh, Feluca, Ghost, thank you for the follow. Um, is Wizzy, uh, oh, that, and that was, uh, before stream. Um, Feluca did the first, I think Dello did as well. Um, Laura Khan, Alessi Archer, Hermit, um, Sleppy, Raz, thank you for the biddies. Um, Fishy, yeah, thank you for all of those gifted subs. Raz, thank you for the gifted sub. This was a very crazy stream. It was a lot of fun. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, and we will uh, discuss offline. Uh, we are going to be raiding out to uh, Wanganator right now. Um, so everyone stick around. Hang out for the rest of this raid train. It's going to be going on for quite a few more hours. Um, I do have some running around to do, so I'm just going to be in lurk mode. But thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you, Hermit, for DMing this, even though you are on the road. Uh, much appreciated. Of course. Um, thank you for streaming it today. Oh, not a problem. Raz, Ghost, and uh, Rose, thank you all for coming out and having a lot of fun with us today. And to all the viewers, thank, thank you, you guys well. for coming out. And yeah, as, as Fishy just did there, um, spam the Bali raid. Um, copy pass to that, and if you don't ha didn't get your sub today, just any raid emotes are good with a Bali raid inside. And don't forget, Choo Choo, we're on the raid train today. Uh, let's make sure I'm getting the right one here. Twitch. Hope that all of you viewers are enjoying my little homebrew campaign that I'm slapping together hopefully it makes sense narratively these guys keep going down paths i'm not expecting that's <laughs> so, our job we're just the dm's delight um this sometimes i have to i i guess yeah uh, you, you guys really keep me on my toes so. <laughs> just cre keeping that brain flexible okay I'm so just glad i chose I'm just glad I chose not to do Tempest for a full campaign because this amount of just not caring for the objective <laughs> would not work it's out. It's a little hard. A yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. You guys are either chaotic or apathetic. And, or I guess, <laughs> and then we have Tell. So it's <laughs> not a lot of like. <laughs> like, okay, guys, come on. Come on, let's go this way, please. <laughs> so. Okay, so I'm going to raid out to the Wanganator right now, and uh, then we can spam it all in, and then I'm going to hit stop, and we can do a quick wrap-up in uh, Discord, because I do have some running around to do. But here we go. Sounds Thank good. you guys all for coming out. Choo-choo, raid train time. Bye. Bye.